Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. Today we're taking a look at performance in Super Mario Odyssey. This amazing game is being emulated with Yuzu, with the most up-to-date release as of the time of this video. As you can see, the game looks amazing, and that's because I'm using a few mods specifically made for Super Mario Odyssey by The Boy 181 The mods I'm using are Disabled Dynamic Resolution, so we get the highest available resolution in-game for the cleanest sharpest image possible. Disable camera motion blur, because I really don't like motion blur, but considering the low resolution and frame rate of the original Switch release, it makes sense that it's used in this game. We're also using disable web applet to fix a crash that happens when traveling from Cascade to Sand Kingdom for the first time. Not an issue yet, since we're just starting out, but will be useful in the future. And lastly, screenshot mode graphics to enable the highest quality textures and sampling available in the game. Booyah! Graphics! So, as you can see, the game is hitching a little bit here and there, and you might be noticing that neither my GPU nor my CPU are being stressed in any real way. The reason for these dips is simple. The game is being run for the first time, and so the shader cache is being built as we're playing. Which brings me to the settings I'm using in Yuzu itself. In the emulation and configuration tabs, under general, I have limit speed percent at 100%, so we're not running the game faster than necessary or any slower. With multi-core CPU emulation and extended memory layout, the 6GB DRAM option, ticked on and enabled. Under CPU, I've left accuracy set to auto, so each game will regulate as it sees fit. Finally, under graphics, I'm using the Vulkan API. I have Use Disk Pipeline Cache and Use Asynchronous GPU Emulation set on, as well as Accelerate ASTC Texture Decoding. The game is, of course, being run under full screen mode, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Internal resolution is set to 4320p. Yep, that's right. 8K, motherfuckers! You s a bitch! Booyah! <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, got carried away. I'm using Scale Force Filter, although Bilinear looks just as good overall. So don't worry if you're wondering about the quality of the image. Both look nearly identical. And of course, I've disabled FXAA anti-aliasing. I'm not using the mod that's made by the boy 181 that disables FXAA at a hardware level, because I wanted to see the image quality like this. However, if there's enough interest in a future video exploring other worlds in Odyssey, I may use the mod created by the boy 181 to compare the quality difference. Other settings to note, under the Advanced tab for graphics settings, I have GPU accuracy level set to extreme, because I can, and so I will. <laughs> I also have asynchronous shaders and use fast GPU time ticked on and enabled, and of course 16 times anisotropic filtering. As you can see, using these settings, the game looks friggin' great. Far better than playing Odyssey on your Switch in docked mode. That's not to say that I think the game looks bad. The game looks and plays great on Switch, especially in handheld mode. That tiny screen does a lot to make these games appear better quality than their rendering resolution would allow on a larger screen. Performance is so good here, I may have to make a secondary video on Odyssey, detailing performance on the Asus Phoenix RTX 3060, I think it would be great to see what that tiny little monster is capable of in modern emulated games. So if you'd like to see that as well, hit that thumbs up and subscribe! That 160 to 180 watt power target, I think, is great for low power, low heat builds, and may lend itself well to being in an emulation machine. We may not be able to hit 8K craziness, but I definitely think 4K would be possible in most Yuzu optimized games. Concerning performance with the current setup, however, CPU usage is generally hovering right around 5%, sometimes kicking up as high as 10 to 12%, but that only lasts a few seconds. Temps are very low, generally about 40 Celsius. I think something like a 5600X or a 5600G would do perfectly fine here. I think Intel's equivalents would do equally as well performance-wise with low usage and temps. The 3080 Ti itself is seeing generally about 40% usage, and temps maintain right around 50 Celsius. During most open area scenes and during heavy shader compilation, 
The GPU runs around 220 to 240 watts, which isn't too bad. In lighter scenes, power draw is closer to 170 to 190 watts. All around, power consumption is great, which is keeping temps very low. VRAM usage is hovering right between 8 to 9 gigabytes of usage, which is a lot, but if your GPU has 8 gigabytes available, I would just reduce the resolution to 4K. You really wouldn't be missing out on any detail. This test is meant to push the resolution and settings to a ridiculous level. All in all, performance is very good, and I think you can achieve very similar performance on a much more mainstream hardware setup. No need to break the bank to achieve high quality emulation. So, this isn't me telling everyone that they need to emulate their Switch games. I'm just a nerd that has many interests and is curious about what's possible with more up-to-date hardware. And I honestly just wanted to see how well or how poorly Odyssey would run on my PC, with potentially better settings available to me. I know, I know, Nintendo likes to emphasize gameplay over graphics, and that is truly commendable. They've released so many Smash hits, it's hard to talk negatively about what Nintendo has produced over the years. But... The Switch is just over five years old at the time of this video's release. It's time to start asking Nintendo to look into a more powerful Switch console, or an evolution of the system, I think. I'm not saying we need handheld 4K graphics with the highest resolution, textures, and ray tracing, and all of the shading in the world. That's just asking way too much. But I think it's good to see what's possible, and to keep our games accessible to us as we and these systems age. Game preservation is a real problem for us fans, and Nintendo, I think, personally, needs to look into giving its fans and user base a way to hold onto our long-held treasures. Until then, I will advocate for emulation. Emulation of the games you personally own. Do not pirate games! I am in no way advocating that people download illegal ROMs and ISOs. But if you own it, you should be able to emulate it and keep playing it, especially with older consoles becoming harder and harder to acquire, and with hardware that was made years ago beginning to fail. We need some form of preservation. Now yes, I do know that Nintendo has been releasing classic games on their NSO service, and that's great but there are still a lot of games that haven't been released. Some games that I would love to play, and the only way to access them is to pay a very high price to import those games, and another high price for an imported console, or emulation. But the only way to get those emulated ROMs and ISOs is illegally, and I don't want to do that. I would like to have a legal path to download or buy these games in some form or fashion from Nintendo themselves that isn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. I hope you all found this video useful in some way, and if you're a fan of emulation, hit that thumbs up, subscribe all, and check me out over on Twitter at hardly underscore tech. Also check out my Patreon, and lastly, give my secondary channel Hardly Games a view if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. I'll be uploading gameplay clips and videos of games that I'm playing currently on a fairly regular basis over there on Hardly Games. So again, check it out. I would really appreciate it. Alright, so I have some extra footage here of the rest of the first level in Super Mario Odyssey. So I'm gonna let that play in the background so you can all see what performance is like through the rest of this session. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Bye now! Bye bye!
Oh, be fine, huh? 